put this up and if this is interesting for anybody, um, we built a, uh, this is actually a chart for a, a shop we built in, uh, I think it was Venezuela. Um, they color coded their meshes and then we, we kind of told them, especially when starting, you know, what goes on what mesh. Anybody uh, bought a, a brand new shop set up and, and the dealer sold them all 110 mesh and said that works for everything. 110 mesh is probably one of those meshes that doesn't have a lot of application. It's too coarse for detailed work. The threads are too close together and too fat to do any real uh, uh, dimensional type of printing. So 110s are a little tougher to work with than a lot of the other the other uh, meshes. We start out towards the bottom of 40 to 60. Anything below that is going to be more like uh, for huge glitter or uh, maybe caviar beads and things like that. So we kind of go with a with a 40 to 60 for some of our glitter type of work. This is kind of the special stuff here. For our specialty printing, we always use an 8370. So most people know what the first number means, right? 83 is 83 threads per inch. That means there's 83 of them lined up. The second number is actually the uh, uh, thread diameter, 70 micron thread diameter. A typical 83 or a typical 8386 has about 120, 130 micron thread. In this particular one, that's almost cut in half. So when I make the thread smaller, that opens up the area, allowing those thicker inks, high density clear sculpture base, those kinds of things, to pass through much more easily. So we use a ton of 8370. Now it's hard to manage sometimes because that 70 micron thread is about the same size thread as a 230. And a 230 is a pretty fine mesh, right? And if I drop my uh, squeegee on it, I break a 230. So sometimes that 70 micron thread is a little bit harder to manage. So you can buy a 100 micron thread, which is still better than a, than a uh, say a typical 86 or a typical 110. And then we kind of jump into, we run most of our spot color or vector type work on a 156. We run our top plates on 230s, 196, process work or uh, simulated work on your 305. Now, the Fashion Soft is awesome to go on dark colored garments, but you can't get a lot of uh, uh, opacity. Uh, and typically anymore, people aren't asking for white, white on black. So this uh, having this uh, kind of gray or, or uh, the soft hand is more important than the opacity. Uh, and you really can't get opacity with the Fashion Soft ink, and that's not the point of it. And you really don't get a whole lot of results when you run it through a 110 mesh either. So if we want a real soft hand, we start running into the 196, 230, 305 so that our hand, we're not depositing as much ink. We don't care about opacity, so theoretically we could even go up 355, 380 and get a lot less ink. And if you're running a manual, you're going, hey, I can't push through at 305. I never use 305. But once you thin it down with the Fashion Soft and it has the, uh, the silicone in it anyway, it falls right through. So it's, it's almost the consistency of water anyway. Now one little trick we've learned is you got to really seal up your screens as far as taping the edges because it is thin enough when you pop up your screen all the inks are run to the back. So just a word of advice before you start it, you're going to end up with ink all over the floor if you don't seal up your screens. Um, if anybody wants this, I can email it to them. Just drop me a, uh, it's a PDF, uh, just drop me a, a line and I'll be happy to share it with you. Typically, if your screen man or yourself think about it, you come up with your own chart that easy. But for some reason, uh, uh, folks just kind of have a difficulty, I guess, putting it on paper. So if anybody wants this, it's a uh, manipulable, you're able to manipulate uh, this PDF if you want. On the ink side of things, um, all of the inks, like we said a little bit earlier, are all designed kind of to do something. Puff, it's designed to go up and out, right? So if I take a, uh, say I need a uh, PMS 186 red, uh, and I want to do high density, so I use, I use a sculpture base, I just grab a 186 off the shelf and I mix them 50-50, because that's the color I need. What, what's going to happen to that? First of all, it's kind of pink because the, you know, most of the bases, besides like a clear, have a milky or a white type of uh, influence. So if I mix them 50-50, I'm going to end up with a real pink looking red. The second thing is I just cut my sculpture base in half. So if it's made to come up a little bit in the dryer and I cut it in half, it doesn't do anything in the dryer. 
So what we like to do, uh, whether you run this system or not, is to set up a PC system for your for your specialty eggs. Uh, both the Oasis and the Epic system, you can buy a PC system where if I take that sculpture base and mix 186 using my formula but using the uh, sculpture base rather than uh, the standard base, I'm only using 10-15% pigment. So I'm still able, I'm able to control my color and get much closer to where I'm trying to get in the first place, but also I got 80, 90, 95% sculpture base, so it's going to do what it was designed to do in the first place. So, I mean, lots of people cut it all the time and use standard inks off the shelf, but when I'm messing with uh, specialty inks, I really like to, to bring in the pigment concentrate system. There's a bunch of different bases available with textures. I'm standing right in front of my monitor. Um, when I say uh, you got to think outside the box there um, and uh, think outside the bucket, uh, we were messing around with uh, floating glitter in, in HD clear. Basically, it's clear so you can see through it, so whatever's behind it, you can get a, an image uh, behind the, the clear, which is pretty cool. So we start floating different colored uh, glitters in that in that clear. Um, I think we were cleaning a screen or something and went, wow, that looks really cool on black. So uh, any floating glitter, say a 5%, 2 to 5% of uh, different colored glitter on black looks really cool. The problem is, well, we got to do it on green and purple and orange and white. So we basically started running a, a black printer under this glitter like we would a, a normal uh, uh, white printer using it the same way. We end up with like a black gold and then a black emerald, black cherry, black blueberry. So again, not really designed to do that, but it gives us uh, another look or another approach. Um, just kind of taking again, thinking a little bit differently than than uh, atypical. Stacking high densities. Now, if you look at a lot of the images too, if we keep them half distressed, nobody's ever going to know if it's really dialed in or, or perfect. So in this case, we just took uh, our image and then choked it. This is actually five color with four flashes. And we took the image, choked it, choked it, choked it, one point, one point, one point, and then we got this pyramid look. Now, it's distressed enough too that nobody's going to know that this part didn't clear. So we always uh, try to set ourselves up in a position to, to make sure that we're going to minimize our exposure uh, as far as uh, misprints or problems. The anti-texture, um, we are talking about that a little bit with our, with our uh, Fashion Soft. It's a great way to go with a real uh, super soft hand. And you can run, in this particular case, it's not a great image, it's kind of even hard to see. Um, we really don't need any bright, bright white, so that's 100% plastisol, and we're able to still get that super soft hand. We call it kind of uh, just much like the, the uh, you know, the different versions that, that mimic a different decorating technique. We call it uh, faux or fox water base or, or uh, uh, fox leather or anything. Again, you make it look like something that's not. It always seems to work pretty well. Um, we do things like Nick and squeegees, so we get some textures uh, just with the now brand new squeegee that seems kind of costly, but um, you get some great textures doing that. We also run uh, brushes in our flood bars and squeegees here and there for, for good textures. Let me show you that real quick. That's, that's using the Nick squeegee. We use a, uh, an HD clear over the ball, which really makes it look like leather. And then that's using the uh, the brushes. You get a uh, kind of an aluminum look there, and a more chromed out look there. I'll pass those around as well. 